Hi guys, welcome to video 6 I believe it is and we are going to be looking at how China limited European contact, alright? I think this would be a good color for today, very good. So here are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 terms you need to know for today's lesson. Alright, I would take a second, press the pause button and make sure you write all of these down. Alright? One good way to compare and contrast is a Venn diagram. What did Europe, what did China, Japan do? What they do differently? What do they do similar? All right. China limits European contact. China was the dominant power in Asia and Europe. Europeans wanted to trade with them. 1368 to 1644, you get the Ming Dynasty ruling China. They forced Korea and other parts of Southeast Asia to pay tribute, basically payoffs to show respect and so that the Ming Dynasty wouldn't crush them. Everybody did it for them, so China expect Europe to do the same thing. Hung Wu was the first uh, Ming Emperor. After he defeated, he kicked out the Mongols in 1368. He fixed the way they did agriculture. He went back to the Confucian traditions and moral standards, and he made the government uh, more efficient. He hired people who are actually good at the job. That's what merit-based means. The interesting thing, like, that seems like a real plus, right? The real negative thing is he was pretty ruthless and wasn't afraid to execute anybody who disagreed with him. Uh, he dies, so Hung Wu, XX, RIP, RIP, rest in son. His son, Yung Lo, not to be confused with Yolo, takes over. He moved the royal court to Beijing, built that famous forbidden city. He was interested in the outside world. He wanted to see what was going on out there, so 1405... Another vocabulary word here, Zheng Hu, he sends out on explorations. Uh, long distances, many ships, many people, huge ships. You'll see how big the ships were in a minute. Uh, this was Chinese way of flexing their muscles, showing how big they are. Um, and when they went to these countries, they started to demand tribute. They expected the countries they saw to pay them money or the dynasty threatened to collapse them. Um, just like American politics, 28 years later, people are like, oh, this is a waste of money. You know, like in America, we've cut on NASA because it's a waste of money. They cut on the exploration. Zheng He was a Chinese admiral, led all the uh, voyages, huge ships, Southeast Asia to Africa, fighting ships, storage vessels. Uh, he had one treasure ship that measured over 400 feet, just to give you an idea. That's the Santa Maria. That's his boat. Notice the difference. Um, there's an interesting argument out there. There's an author named Gavin Menzies who argues that actually he wrote this book in 2002. He argues in 1421 there were Chinese explorers who got to America. Uh, proof of the passage of the main fleets to the Americas, Australia. And a lot of what he argues is the Chinese used these special sort of anchors and some of those anchors have been found off the coast of California, found on Australia, New, New England, and Poly Polynesia. So let's talk about Young Lowe's, not Yolo's, Forbidden City. It was, again, a way to show how powerful they were. 14 years to build, 35 feet in height. The low and the Faroe no, no allowed in to the Forbidden City. All right, let's see how it is there. Good. Um, Hung Wu's death led to a power struggle. Well, again, we've got Young Lo taken over. We've talked about all this. Here are the voyages. You see how far they got. And again, there are authors out there who believe they got as far as America. He had as many as close to 30,000 people in his crew. He had all types of people with him. And again, flexing their muscles. Um... This 156 number is controversial because it's counting tribes and things like that. So 156 groups sent tribute. We saw that picture already. So now the backlash happens. Oh my gosh, why are we spending so much money trading? So what once China had as an open door is now a shut door. And only the government can conduct foreign trade. 
through three different ports. So there's only three places where you can go and trade. Canton, Macau, and Ningbo. Uh, reflected isolationism, isolation keeping to yourself. We don't want outsiders, the three ports. This leads to a huge opportunity for smuggling. Um, what it also does is the Chinese economy then has to start making stuff for itself. But the problem is trade and manufacture are seen as low-level jobs, as the unlikable jobs, the dirty jobs. So China takes a long time to industrialize. The government's going to spend money on agriculture, farming. Taxes were low on agriculture and high in manufacturing. So what would people do? They'd farm. We talked about this. Um, 1644, the Manchus from Northeast China seized power until about 1900. Um, and again, this Qing dynasty, the Manchus who come in, they take over, they create the Qing dynasty, which is the second dynasty that we're going to talk about. Notice they're going to expand, lower taxes. Um, really interesting is they welcome the Jesuits. There was a connection to the um, Reformation unit. The Jesuits taught math, science, and medicine. His grandson is going to rule. It gets big, it gets used. And expanded European missionaries in China. So religious leaders are allowed in. They conquer Korea. So they're expanding again. But what they're going to do is they're going to stay isolated. Only special ports. The Dutch accept the Chinese. And what the rule was called was called kowtow. You had to bow down and show respect to the Chinese. Because the whole theme here is the Chinese wanted respect, wanted to be treated like their powerful country. Um, the Dutch do it. So they get tea, silk, and porcelain. The great British are like, uh, good day, mate. We ain't doing that. So they refuse to do it. China, self-sufficient. We don't need the British. You ain't going to bow. You ain't going to show us respect. You ain't show me no respect. You ain't getting none of my stuff. We just talked about that. By 1800, tea made up about 80% of the shipments from China to Europe. Again, farming, European-type products. Again, there's this whole patriarchal society that we see even today in China. Again, Qing and Ming Dynasty, both very agricultural, very patriarchal. That's a little repetitive. Before you go, I want to show you two things. How do you say that admiral's name? I'm glad you asked. Zheng Ha. Zheng Ha. Yes, that's an actual video on YouTube. And I want to just share you this with you. It's a minute-long video. And after that, we'll be done. This is the summary of 1421. The year China discovered America, P.S. By Gavin Menzies. On March 8, 1421, the largest fleet the world had ever seen set sail from China to proceed all the way to the ends of the earth to collect tribute from the barbarians beyond the seas. When the fleet returned home in October 1423, the emperor had fallen, leaving China in political and economic chaos. The great ships were left to rot at their moorings and the records of their journeys were destroyed. Lost in the long, self-imposed isolation that... That's important because of the political backlash, exploration stops, and even records are being excited about that travel stops because everybody saw it as a waste of money. All right, I'm done. Bye.